Hello, welcome back to City Planner Plays, where we are creating the ultimate beginner's guide to city skylines by creating the city of Trattoria. And in the previous episode, we introduced the Sunset Harbor DLC. We went through a number of things. We went through the fishing industry, some of the new utility buildings, and today we're going to get into some of the things with this DLC that I guess... I don't like as much. Just to be just to be completely blunt with you, we're going to get into the policies and the trolley bus and the inner city bus terminal. These are interesting additions for some people. And for me, I almost always leave them out of my build. With the exception of the inner city bus uh, facility, the policies are a little weird. The bus uh, terminal is is helpful, but not totally necessary if you have a, a, a nice airport. And uh, the trolley bus, it's it's limited. So let's get into some of those limitations by building a new little town. So we're right by the airport and our airport's functioning well. We're gonna build a little community right here. So the very first thing I wanna do is we're gonna take a look at our terrain and <laughs> we can see that it has been, uh, this is not the easiest place to build. So we are gonna do a bit of leveling here. So I generally preach to respect the topography until the topography has been absolutely brutal to you, then you will make the topography respect you. So what we'll do is we'll create a couple of level pads through here. Okay, if you've watched my channel for a while, you might be wondering if I've had a bad day and now I'm taking it out in this terrain and you know, no, I've actually had a pretty good day, but I think that we need to uh, do a little something with this to make it uh, a little more manageable. So the reason why I care so much about this in this particular area where, you know, we're really only, if you take a look at this, we're not going up very many meters. The main reason is that the game just doesn't handle uh, those types of changes in elevation all that well. So rather than pre-grading block by block, we're going to do something a little more extreme. So let's figure out where we're going to put our main road. And I think what we're going to do, we'll do a little bit more terrain modification right here. And this is going to be kind of the, the focal point of our area. So I'm not overly concerned with the terrain now because I've done quite a bit to smooth it out. What I am concerned about is making sure that I can actually make a connection over here. So we're just going to pay some attention to that. So I'm going to try to use my curved road tool to make a nice connection, but I am going to need to continue to pay attention to my grades because if I don't, we're going to end up with some really janky looking roadway connections. So right there, what I did was I, I sloped up. So I picked the slope road tool, right mouse clicked on the top part of my slope and then left mouse clicked where I was going to the, the lowest point and pulled that back. And we'll do that one more time. So we'll come into here, I will click on my terrain heights, I'll go to my top slope, and then where I want my road to go, I'll go to the bottom and go click on my left button, just pull that right up. And what that does is it blends the terrain and I can have a really beautiful slope, which is important because this is gonna be a high capacity corridor. So. I want this road first and foremost because we're going to be building trolleys and you can't build an effective trolley system without a lot of pre-planning and that's because these are pretty inflexible. So that is one of my primary critiques of these generally. So I'm just going to build this little square here. And so the trolleyways, trolley buses can be found underneath your transport menu under trolley bus and for a trolley bus you have to have a depot and all of your roads need to be converted to trolley lane roads so or trolley bus roads with wires so limiting factors so this this operates almost identically to a tram and one of the things that i've never tried that i'm very curious about and we're going to test it is can you mix the two or is that impossible because i have a sneaking suspicion it's impossible. And the reason I think this is there's a mod that I've used that uses the trolley bus roads. And I believe it's one of the parking assets um, that uses trolley bus roads as the base. And as a result, you can't mix that road 
with a trolley bus. It just, it totally borks it. So let's see what this does. So we'll come through. I'm going to pull in some normal roads. And it's not even a standard size. <laughs> so <laughs> we will need to delete this. Okay, so we've got our trolley bus there. And just like a tram, you come through, you adjust that. There we go. So with this, we could theoretically have a trolley. We need to get power to this building though. So let's go ahead. I'm just going to set a quick route. So we'll come through. We'll have a line. Similar to a bus, we're going to reverse this. And that is a complete trolley bus route. Now, interestingly, I can't believe it will work without electricity because that is what these overhead lines are. They're electrical wires. So without the electricity, the trolley buses shouldn't work. Yet we're throwing a ton of trolley buses out here. So, you know, I guess it's not necessarily the height of realism and that's probably for the best because it would be a disaster if it were. We are going to pull a road over here. This is not the most ideal connection, but I don't want this to be a cul-de-sac. So let's look at our terrain. Come right here. And now we've got a nice bridge over here and we'll just pull this on down too. So now we at least have some connectivity that'll get some utilities through here. We could try to improve this bridge by, you know, uh, raising this up here. But truthfully, I, I like the look of it with the, the span. It's a nice looking bridge. So we'll take that because we've got other things to worry about over here. So let's get some water and power to this area and begin building. And we'll take a look at our trolley bus and discuss why you may or may not be interested in this. Okay, so we've got power over here and water. We're going to leave this alone and do something special there, but we will do a little bit more over here to get power around. We're going to be really basic with this. We'll just have a pretty simple grid. We're not going to get overly concerned. And then we're going to put water pipes underneath here too. Just a really basic grid. The main reason I've I've put it in the way that I have is just so that we're preserving this area. I can have a couple of residential lots over here. We're gonna need some commercial for certain. Industry is really what the city is screaming for, but I'm not I'm not uh, overly excited to deliver on on that uh, desire. So let's go through here, and we'll place some commercial. We'll place that all the way along the waterfront. And then back here, we will have a bit of residential. We're going to keep this a, a pretty low density place. We're going to need some city services and utilities, but for the time being, if we take a look, we, we'll place those in here. I'm going to put these, we'll make a, a little bit of a, a city services complex over here. And the nice thing about this is it will be on our trolley bus line, which is really just a kind of a circulator loop at this point. Not really, it doesn't really do much, but that's part of the problem of this particular asset is they often don't do very much. Okay, so I've placed some of the basics. We got a fire department, a police department, a medical clinic, a school, a park, really the most basic things that you would expect to see here. We're gonna speed this up and let this fill in and take a look at what happens over here. Okay, so we've made a little town here. It's not super exciting and not even all of it has power, but we are going to work with this. So this right now, if we take a look, <laughs> interesting. I wonder if we have any ridership on this without any power no we have no ridership now that could be because that you know you don't really get anywhere on this thing it could also be just because it doesn't have power let's connect this and see what happens there so our entire community should have power now and i'm curious to see if we're finally getting some transit riders really see people lining up so I'm gonna guess no 
Yeah, this is not a very useful route. It's not it's not taking you anywhere. There's no nobody to get here. So maybe we'll improve that by adding our bus station. So that's under our normal buses. And what we'll do, so you have your bus station, then your inner city bus station, and then your inner city bus terminal. Now, for this particular DLC, the V uh, the, the, the what has been added is actually the I believe it's the bus terminal. No, it's actually the bus station, interestingly. So that's another kind of fun thing. Some of these things were added as part of other DLC, somewhere with the base game. So right here we have our terminal. Let's add that on the edge of the town. So this is our inner city bus station. It's not bad to look at. It's it's a it's a pretty attractive asset. Probably not the actually we're gonna move this. This isn't a, a very good location. We don't want to look at that. Uh, if we are over here, and we're missing some of the ability to transfer in between the inner city bus station and the trolley. So now at least we have something feeding into the trolley bus because before it was nothing. So. I was mistaken. I believe that all of the inner city bus options come with Sunset Harbor. So we could have gone with either the terminal or the station. So if we take a look at these, the station generates 50 pollution, requires a highway connection, and people can come here. 480 upkeep a week, 38,000 in cost. Over here, we're looking at significantly more upkeep and noise. It's the larger alternative to the bus station. The terminal uses coaches and again requires that highway connection. It uh, doesn't require an inner city bus stop or lines. And I believe that it's the exact same thing here. Doesn't require it, but you could place a regular bus stop here if you wanted to. So why don't we just, we'll go for broke. Let's put the biggest one we can. And that takes up a whole block. It feels very official. So, there we go. And the funny thing is, my blocks don't work for these, so now I have a bunch of funky blocks, which is fine. That is natural. Things aren't perfect. You don't have to fill up every last corner of all of your blocks. That's fine. It's totally fine. So there we go. We could, if we wanted to clean up the look of this, we just scoot this over just a bit. And if we really wanted to get picky in particular, we could put a plain path there, fill this in a little bit. It's not perfect, but it's it's perfectly fine, and it's it's good enough for me. Uh, and then we could decorate this with some trees. Okay, so no one would accuse this of being the most interesting place in the world, but it, it, it's fine. So this will attract inner city buses as is. We could leave it. They'll have a bit of a circuitous route. They'll come off here and have to loop back around, but it's fine. In fact, I'm curious, are we seeing them now? Not yet. The other thing that we could do is we could make a normal bus route here. So if we wanted to connect this up, we could just start a line here. Let's say we want to go to the airport. Get people over here and we'll bring them right into our new inner city bus station. I don't know why you would ever do that, <laughs> because if you think about it, what that really means is that you're coming from the airport to leave town on a bus. Probably not the most logical route, but I guess you could make it. And interestingly, with these inner, uh, with these uh, trolley buses, I can't share a stop. So something to keep in mind. I wanted to add a stop so that there's an easy transfer. I had to add another one. So one uh, one strike against the trolley bus. Next strike, let's say we want to have a tram. So let's find our trams. Ah, <laughs> we don't have trams yet. So trams come with uh, snowfall. So we, we can't add those. So I guess if you want the effect of a tram, but you don't have snowfall, you can get it with a bus and that's something. So one of the other things I'm curious about with this is noise, because that would be one of the things that really should separate these. So what is the benefit of a trolley bus if it is not, if you have a clean source of energy? You could you could put you know solar power into here 
and have a clean electric bus operating on these overhead wires with little noise. In fact, in situations where, uh, you know, I've had to speak with the public about electric buses, that is one of the big, big, big benefits of them is that uh, let's say you have a bus going past a bunch of sidewalk cafes. They're significantly quieter, uh, whisper quiet, as opposed to a diesel bus, which will shake you and it smells, you know, and it, it has a lot of power and it'll be able to operate on a, on a cold day, but they're not, they're not great. <laughs> so from, from the standpoint of noise and vibration. So let's take a look at that. So it looks like that may be one of the benefits here. So the way that we're gonna test that is we're gonna take our normal bus route and let's add some stops. Okay, so now we've got a couple of stops and interestingly, I don't know that it's made any difference. Yes, a little bit. You see that there's some noise forming over here so perhaps that's it. You see some right here as well, but you also see that with these, and I think it's where people are leaving the bus when they're departing or when they're, when they're boarding or alighting, you're seeing that noise form. You're seeing that noise form around the station areas. So it's not necessarily a bus thing. So that's not really all that realistic in my opinion, because that's one of the big benefits of, of an electric bus. So um, you lose a lot of flexibility, you know, yeah, I, and the, 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 the biggest issue in my mind is that we just got access to this excellent tool to upgrade our roads and add some really great trees. So let's say I go through here and I add these. That's a bus route. This is a bus route and this road in here is a bus route. But I can upgrade these and the bus can still operate. And now I can come through here and say, you know, what I've always wanted are is a road with pine trees. <laughs> we can't do that. This is gonna be festive. We're gonna throw these decorative trees down the side. And then over here we'll have, let's have some palm trees. It's not perfect. You see that this road here has stops on both sides. The block length is too short to get any trees in and, and, and we have a gap. But here's the thing, there's no option to put trees on any of these. So you end up with a city completely devoid of all trees if this is what you use for your transit alternative. It's fine for someone that someone's not me. So <laughs> that's that's my main feeling about it is they're just it's kind of a limited asset and that's one of the reasons why when I look at the the, the Sunset Harbor DLC it's not one of my favorites. It's fine. I like the fishing industry but the transit options that come with it to me they're skippable. So that said, we are going to finish off this area. And I left this rock in place and what I think we're going to do is We'll open this up. Oh, I can't do that. See, this is another limitation of that. So I tried to close this off, completely broke my bus route because it can't reroute and take another take another route. I'd, I'd have to upgrade all these roads. It's just kind of a mess. It's, it's very messy. So I prefer not to do that. So let's go through it. I was looking at the assets earlier and I thought it would be fun to, we'll find the center of this. 2,000, so 1,000 is the center. Of course, I'm using these trolley roads now, so 200 here, 200 here, and then one road coming down. And the reason why I want to do this is that we are going to place right here this arch. Everyone loves that. And then we'll come through and, and mirror this. We'll make this the focal point of the town. Now, interestingly, our rocks can get in the way of what I was trying to do, but that's okay. Keeping the natural environment in your city is one way to ensure that it feels just a bit more natural.
Okay, so lots of using the curved road tool to find that guideline and make the perfect connection. Now we've got this arch up there with a beautiful view of those stores in the way. So let's also sever these. And I'm just gonna, I have my, I have my zoning tool and I'm coming up and I'm just gonna de-zone de right here so that we maintain that view. And then along here, we can add in some roads. And I'm actually gonna convert this particular road into a path. And now that I think of it, it might look more natural over here if I do the exact same thing. So we'll call a mulligan on that road. Whoops. And let's get the curve in the neighborhood rather than outside of it. There we go. So now this is the focal point. And I don't even think that we need this. And what I'm going to do is we're going to build an area around this so that we have the ability to control some of the policies in this area. We'll make this the town of Hamilton. There we go. And we'll put some water pipes. And the reason I really want that is I want to put a height restriction through here. If there's not one already, we've already got it. Let's add high tech housing. We're going to make this area a bit nicer. And now we have the ability to even control our buildings. We'll make this another green cities zone and try to make it very attractive. So we're going to lose all of our zoning. People are going to move out in, in, in mass. And we, we've made <laughs> kind of a, a fateful decision here. It's a sad one. But uh, we've done it, so we'll, we'll have to live with our, our decision. So we'll come over here, and I'm going to give four blocks radius in empty space to this development. There we go. We'll let this fill in a bit. Now, this is one of those unfortunate things about this DLC that I don't love as we are getting uh, or not DLC, but th this particular zoning type, getting really tall buildings. So what I'm going to do is come through here and I want to set some of these to historical so they don't get to level three. I don't want them to get taller. We'll just see what happens. And interestingly, this one leveled up to level two and got shorter. So maybe I'm making a mistake here. <laughs> I should just look and if it's short building, make it historical. There we go. And I'll just, I'll, I'll, I'll try to relax now. <laughs> we definitely needed some office though. That office helps take care of our industry or office uh, demand. So now it's really just commercial that we're, we have an unmet demand for. And that we can, we can meet a bit more of that. We'll continue our shopping district down here. So that's helping us. So now there's a couple more things that we can take a look at. First of all, I'm very curious where we're at with our fishing industry. Maybe we can add something to this lake. So let's take a look. So we'll pop into our industries tab, into our fishing. We are almost where we need to be with our shellfish. And with our tuna, we're very close. And that's a good reminder for me. Uh, so this is a great place for shellfish fishing. So we're probably going to do that. Uh, what we, what I, what I think I might've made a mistake on is if you come over here and you, you compare the color of the tuna to this blue, they're not right. So that is not a place for tuna fishing. In fact, on this map, we don't, I don't believe that we have a, a place. Maybe off here. I don't think so. I think again, this is, it, Maybe this is a good reminder that you're not going to have every fishing opportunity where you're at. So the tuna, I believe, needs to be at a fairly decent depth. You can certainly modify the types of fish that you have available to you. You're more than welcome to come through here and change or you know raise or lower the depths. So let's say we were to come out here. Let's let's make a pit. 
Okay, so I've taken this as low as it will let me go. Let's see what fish we have here. <laughs> it's the same. So clearly that didn't work out as I had hoped. One thing I know I can easily reproduce is this. Let's pull a very high terrain height, make a little island. And now let's take a look and you see that we have anchovies around that island. So it's just playing with your heights to see exactly which height each fish will be at. So you could certainly do that if that's something you're interested in, or you could just accept that certain fish are not gonna be available in your particular build. So that's the route that I generally like to take. You don't need to get super specific about it and, and try to force a particular type of fish to appear. You can be happy with what you have. So the fish, the fishing industry leads into the, our, our next test, and that is some of the policies. So when we take a look at the policies, let's come to Hamilton and we will look at the policies. And there are a couple of new policies for this particular DLC. So first of all, we have uh, a policy for uh, the fishing couple uh, fishing industry related policies so we have the fishing license which will give a, uh, it, a so it'll charge residents a fee for a fishing license and that will increase your overall residential income by five percent but it'll also reduce your citizen happiness and increase crime by five percent so i don't know how hard up for money you've got to be to think that this is a a useful policy but <laughs> I guess maybe your happiness is very high so let's see let's take a look at our happiness what you can see is you know we're okay we've got about 85 happiness and as far as our residential zone let's take a look at our income about 186,000 per week so let's enact that policy and we'll see what happens so we've got our fishing license and this should be pretty instantaneous. You see the numbers going up. So we're at about 193,000 per week. So that's a pretty significant jump. We went from being in the red to being in the green in terms of our happiness. Let's pop back in here at our city statistics. We'll look at our happiness. Hasn't done anything yet, but that might just be that it needs more time to get through. In terms of crime, I didn't take a look at this. We're at 6% now. Now, I don't know where this crime's going to happen. I figure it'd be by you know, the water. I don't know. 6% uh, is not bad. We would just need to build more jail capacity. Maybe this is the right policy for you. Maybe not. We're still, our budget's, you know, going up and down. But we, we were making more money. So if you can deal with the happiness you're going to need to build more parks if you can deal with the crime you're going to need to build more police stations maybe it's the policy for you granted there's always a tipping point and if you build too many parks and you build too many police stations it's it's really a moot point so uh, i guess things to things to uh to keep in mind so the next policy that we have is a policy for a tourist travel card so the city will receive eight percent more tourists uh, but the inner city bus network will cost 15% more. So this could be a pretty big boon to the city for the cost of this. So this now costs us 1,104 per week. If we take a look, it's supposed to cost 960. So that's not a huge difference, but if it actually gives us what it's supposed to give us, which is 8% more tourists, we should receive more money for that. So let's go into our city statistics and we'll see. Right now we're at 109. I'm gonna, so we're at 109 for tourists and 85 for happiness. I'm gonna let this run for a couple minutes and we're gonna see how things change. After we get these water pipes, And I'm going to let it just go now for just a moment. Okay, so hopefully that was enough time to give us some statistics. 
and it looks like we had a modest increase in our tourists. I don't know if that's attributable to the policy. I'm guessing it is. But really, it's not significant enough for me to say much. We're going from 136 or, or 1036 from 1010. Not, not a huge jump. Now, in terms of our other policy, our happiness has remained relatively flat. So I'm going to say that in general, this policy to bring in more tourists, maybe it's really the number of passengers at this station. Let's test that out as well. So we're at 108. And we'll get rid of that tourist travel card and we'll let that run one more time. I would say that the fishing license policy seems like it could be a winner. The tourist travel card I'm a little... I'm a little more dubious about. Okay, so we'll take a look at this <laughs> and the numbers way higher. And the, the, the truth of the matter is we've got a local bus route going here. And I don't know what really what what is having this impact. So it's really difficult to figure this one out in particular. If we take a look again at our tourists, you know, I, I don't know what to say about that policy. Very difficult to guess what it's doing. I guess we could take our word or take the policy's word <laughs> and and assume if if it is I'm going to I'm going to leave this one on because we only have this one inner city bus terminal. If it applies to tourism generally, we're great. That that's really helpful. We have our airport. If it doesn't, the, the harm is pretty modest. So, we've got a couple more policies that came with this. So these are some city planning policies. We have sustainable fishing, which will decrease the fish yields uh, and increase the harbor upkeep by 15%, but make people happy. And we'll get more money from our commercial income, uh, from our goods. So this one, again, is another really difficult one to, uh, to figure out. But the way that we should be able to figure out is we'll take a look, look at our budget, so 41,000 approximately. We'll come in here. We will enable this. Take a look. And I suppose it's actually the goods sold. So it's it's difficult to see that, that increase. And it might be the goods from the fishing itself, which makes it even more challenging. So this is one of those things where... It's really easy to see the penalty and really difficult to actually see the benefit from it. So uh, I guess your mileage may vary on that particular policy. And we've got two more. We've got this dolphin safe fishing decreases fish shield again, but again, increases happiness. Let's enable both of these because both are supposed to increase citizen happiness. And I'm very curious to see if we see a big jump. And then we have this uh, airplane tours, which is where your local aviation club starts organizing airplane tours, to, which would increase the building plane count, entertainment, and city attractiveness, but it will cause a lot more noise. So, a way that we could test that would be to build the aviation club. Now, you got to keep in mind, we've got our airport here, and the aviation club is just a lot smaller. So the aviation club, I don't even know if it's in here, I believe. Yeah, that's going to be under our unique buildings. There it is. Level five aviation club. And you can just see this is not very big. If we compare it to my runway that I built over here, pretty, pretty small. So I could try to work this into the air, into the airport. It's just, it's going to be really challenging. So what I think we're going to do is just find a spot for it over here along the highway Maybe we'll back it out yeah i don't I, I really truthfully am not super excited to have this asset in the build uh, which is kind of one of those things that you can struggle with if you're trying to just work everything in why don't we just put it right here we'll sneak it in around over here so we'll come up let's come up five and then we'll add this in now, similarly, similarly to the airport, you, you should level this. It's not going to self-level for you, so you're going to have to 
be cognizant of that and do it yourself. And then we'll give this the airport treatment. Let's get rid of all these trees. And why don't we even fence it in? We'll make it feel a little bit more like our airport build. Now, interestingly, this is another one of those things where the DLCs are not going to talk to one another. And as a result, we won't be able to cleanly connect these, which is unfortunate. But we'll use our imaginations and be happy with a bit of imperfection. <laughs> and I thought I might get lucky and have a little bit of power right here. I'm not so lucky, so we'll just... We got rid of our diner at uh, in Verde Beach. We'll just add a small one right here. So I'm just... It won't form until there's some power. Now I can get rid of it, and we've got a connection. We will, that is not, that is not what I was hoping for. <laughs> that doesn't exactly look like a diner. It looks like a crazy downtown donut shop. You know, they would have advertising on this road though, so I guess we'll accept it. So as we look at this, we'll see that there's not a lot happening. There's a lot of tourists, and I'm curious, we'll take a look at the noise. It is very loud. You know, it's an airport. What can you expect? If I add a district over here, I wonder if I can see the noise of this district. I don't, I know I can't, that's not gonna work. So with that said, there's not really a way for me to, 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 to judge this outside of just looking at the sound. Then we'll come in here, we'll turn on airplane tours and then quickly turn this, on. oh, I didn't even need it's, it's a very quick hitter. You can see that immediately the noise area around there jumps. Let's see what it does to the rest of this. Nothing. Just, just our little airport over here. So it's just our aviation club where we're seeing that big jump. We're seeing lots of planes too. The nice thing about this little aviation club is you do have really small planes, so some Cessnas or something, as opposed to just jumbo jets going through here, getting wild. So we'll, we'll accept that. I'm gonna change these trees. They kind of drive me crazy. It's just a little bit much. And with that, that's pretty much it for this DLC with the exception of one more thing, and that is uh, a policy related to our algae fishing. So let's take a look and we will form an algae fishing farm. So now we did unlock our other harbors. We have salmon and shellfish. Why don't we build a little spot for fishing? So I'm gonna grab a height very close to the shore. And then I'm using my slope tool. I'm picking this height of the road. And then I'm coming to my low point and just sloping up. So you don't need to use this just for roads. You can also use it to create some slopes that are just a bit more natural. And then come through and, and feather some of this out. And now it just seems like there's a, a little bit more order to, to the mess that we just made of the terrain. <laughs> so <laughs> that's the main reason why I like to use that slope terrain tool so much these days. We can pull this out to get rid of some of those lumpies and bumpies and smooth out here even a little bit. So now that we've got this, let's pop in. We are gonna add in shell fishing. And look at that, because of the way this is set up, it's not gonna, it, we can't let that extend too far out. I want two things, shell fishing and an algae farm. And to get the LG farm lined up with this, I'll need to extend this over. And you can see it's really difficult for me to line this up, and that's because I didn't use a key wall. We're gonna use one. I was hoping I could avoid it. It's one of those things that if you, if you don't really want to use them, you're almost better off just using them to start, and then you can always get rid of them later. 
but to try to do it go without it's it's just really a challenge okay there we go there's our seaweed and we'll do shell fishing as well got our connection there and we need a road heading up so we'll just really curve this quickly send this back up this way and then we'll find a nice node pull that through we can back this up a little bit we'll look at our terrain because I have not been respecting the topography and let's slope our terrain if we're gonna do some things we should do some things advice of the day <laughs> so <laughs> and there we go nice connection down feels natural and it will pull this up just come around the bend here and connect into our road there we go now we've got something that's workable so we've got this algae farm and I could swear that we had one over here what did I build that's a fish farm okay so they look strikingly similar the big difference is rather than seeing fish here you see algae I guess <laughs> so now we've got this we need to have our route so let's create a route now in the previous episode I was showing you know a, a route that was not maximally efficient rather than being maximally efficient it it really activated the water that's generally what I try to do now I know that you could have a number of smaller routes that are much more efficient and I'll show you how to find efficiency in just a moment because this route will not be efficient I'll tell you that much right off the bat and I'll also tell you that I don't care <laughs> so let's get this fish uh, this fish boat coming out now remember we're, we're seeing a lot of fish from here so there will be significantly more traffic from this in terms of the number of fish than all of the other sources that we have so I'm going to speed this up so we get some fish coming. So when you click on the boat, it tells you how many fish are loaded. And if you follow your route, you could ideally figure out where it its midpoint should be. So right now we've got this route that goes all the way around. And ideally the midpoint of this route would be right about maybe here. And instead it's over here. So the boat is going to fill up at one point. And when it fills up, it's going to just kind of be circulating for no reason. So if you wanted to maximize the efficiency, you would continue to play with this until it's just right. And instead of having a long route, you would add another harbor to fish the area that uh, is, you know, not full of boats. So instead, I'll let this thing get full and do a little bit of loop-de-loop, -loop, not worry about it too much. They're all going to get full in about the right or in about the same spot. So we're really not doing anything over here. We're fishing from this part of the, of the route. I'm not overly concerned about it, but I know that if you want to be super efficient, the way that you would do that is to shorten that route. So the reason I cared so much about getting LG is for one of our policies. And we're going to get to that, but I want to expand our little town a bit so that we can meet our population threshold, which today is 90,000. We're very close, but we're not there just yet. So I'm gonna add a few blocks onto our city and then we will continue to build out. And I think we're gonna build, we'll build down downhill. So I was just gritting this out without much regard for the terrain, only to realize that we were really brutalizing the terrain. So. We are going to do something a little bit different. We're going to follow the terrain that we've created with our grid. Okay, so we've got some terracing action going on and we can live with a bit of that. What we can't live with is some of the things that were happening here. So we made a little bit of a change. Now we can send some blocks up here. This will make this city just a little bit more interesting anyway, so uh, I'm, I'm good with it. I'm adding a temporary power line since I've 
destroyed all of the power lines serving this neighborhood. That's going to send us backwards on our journey to reaching our population milestone. And now that we've laid out this little edge to the neighborhood, we are going to add in some water pipes. There we go. So let's just zone this out with residential, except along here, we will have some commercial. And we'll have a little note of commercial activity right here as well. And I'm going to zone on the inside of the neighborhood, but not the outside, considering we haven't developed that yet. And in here as well, I'm going to leave that. And I could probably do a lot better with city services. And in the future, we might use some eminent domain, which is the height of realism, uh, to, to fill in some of our city services. We'll have one big park right now and then call it a bit of a day on that today. As we experiment with the game a bit. decided maybe one more wouldn't be so bad so we'll add a park here and we could forest this out then and that might be a nice transition between this city and this one over here easy to do with our new trees i love these live oaks i've said it before i'll say it again increases the flammability while also looking absolutely outstanding so here we go we're gonna we're gonna make this place we're gonna get this this part of the city ready for the natural disasters DLC. <laughs> I'm, I'm, we'll take some bets. I bet you this is the first place to launch into flames because it's a forest and that's the way natural disasters looks at things. <laughs> so we're going to need to live with that, I guess. But look at this. I mean, of his vanilla trees just just tough next to these. Uh, Bob would help with that. Uh, the, the, the tree replacer. You could replace all of the trees in this asset with some of these new ones. And it would look so much better. Okay, so we've almost made that connection here that I'm really desperate for. Once that happens, we can get rid of this power line and it won't be necessary anymore. And this can be a little bit more self-sufficient. I guess that's not the right, not the right, right word for it, but... It can be free of power lines, which will be great because I'm pretty ter ter pretty tired of them. And I think I'm going to finish off building over here. And we'll again follow the terrain. Let the terrain guide us. And now we have our power connection through here, so I'll get rid of these. And again, more single family zoning. I do want to check our land values. That could be something holding us back in this area. We're not really adding a ton of population. So let's take a look and see if there's anything that we can do to improve this. It looks like our parks are, we're, we're doing okay there. We could certainly do a little bit better. We'll add, we'll be sure to add in parks, uh, especially dog parks, because everyone loves a dog park or so developers think, and maybe even a tropical garden just to keep up with our happiness. Now in terms of schooling, let's make sure we have what we need there as well. We are fine with elementary school capacity. We did add one. The coverage isn't great over here. A uh, high school, same deal. It says it's fine, but is it really? I don't, I don't know. I think that we probably need to give this a little bit more thought. So we are going to add a high school. And then I will add a tennis court next to it. Basketball court, rather. We'll add a couple of them. And then attempt to clean up our terrain. The nice thing about these assets is you can really do quite a bit to, to clean them up and make them look nice and then grab these trees and and really add a dense dense forest around here. Now we're seeing a lot of backup and I think part of the reason we're seeing that is there are folks coming through here. The other thing is we didn't manage our traffic yet. 
So we've got all of this vanilla traffic management. We'll set this to a priority road. The reason we do that is because then I can just click these signals and it'll prioritize that collector. So the other thing that we don't have over here is death care. I knew that I was missing something when I placed the hospital, but I totally forgot to add it in. So let's go through and ensure that we have death care. We'll use a bit of eminent domain over here. We'll have one over here as well. So this bridge eventually will carry some traffic. I don't know how good it's going to be, but it's going to carry some. When I make the connection here to the trash collection, that'll probably increase the amount of traffic that it carries. Because rather than proceeding through here, this trash will likely take the back route, which is one of the reasons I wanted this bridge in general. So that'll be really helpful. This is a bit of a challenge. These are all residents moving in. If you see, they're all just streaming in right now. So we're not going to be able to resolve that traffic. The moral of the story here is when you see traffic like that, don't freak out. It's not always a bad thing. The other thing that you see is that there's traffic going over to our shell fishing harbor. So that's another thing that we could keep in mind. So we are we're getting bigger. We're going to zone this area. We could open up spots for roadway connections. That's what you'd see in reality. You don't have to do that if you don't want to, but I'll do it. It'll, it'll allow me to zone a little bit more without using eminent domain in the future. So this will clear up. I, I guarantee that it will clear up. Uh, let's see what our traffic flow looks like. Yeah, it's this little stretch right here is taking our traffic flow way, way down. So that will get better, but it will take time. I am curious though, what do we have for a chunk? Oh, that, that's not good. <laughs> so another issue here that we've also got stop signs all the way up and down here because of that prioritization. So let's clear that up. And truthfully, this would, would, would be a really excellent candidate for a roundabout if there weren't so much development around here. And it could, we could look at having some vanilla traffic treatments. Those sorts of treatments include increasing the number of lanes to add turning lanes here. I'd love to keep this at two to taper down as we get back onto the highway, but we could certainly do this. And you can see that that gives another lane. It has a dual left now uh, and a dual, uh, dual straight and a, or sorry, dual right, straight and a left. Dual straight and a left. Yeah, there, there we go. Here, we've got another signal. So that's, again, not beneficial. We want people to stream through here. And I'm going to just upgrade this entire road. I was reluctant to do so because then you end up having traffic merging onto this. Kind of awkwardly. But I'll take it. We're also using both of our lanes then, which is helpful. So here, we just kind of, we're, we're stuck where we're at. So we will accept that. So we've got one more policy to test out and that is our policy related to algae farms. So we'll go into services and we have this algae based water filtering. So increases the filtering of water intakes and purification level of drain pipes by 45%, but it also reduces your algae farm production by 50% and the water facility upkeep by 15. So it's doing a lot of things there. And what I think that this is telling us and what I know this to be telling us is that we could place this and the pollution level will drop. So we're going to do something. We'll see how dumb this is. <laughs> we'll cut that off. We're going to add a drain pipe and we're going to add a water pipe. And we are going to add this policy. So let's see what this does. Okay, so I think ideally this would be filtering on the intake and the outtake. So we'll look at our pollution. 
and you can see this is not good enough. That is not going to do the trick. We're polluting this water already. We're sucking up that polluted water. We're going to kill everyone over here. So we'll get rid of that one and let's try something else. So we've got this eco water outlet. Is this good enough now with this treatment? So the eco water outlet purifies everything to, I believe, 85%. So we'd be going beyond that. And what I'm seeing is that it doesn't look like that pollution slick is really increasing. So if we really wanted to get sneaky with it, it I guess it is increasing. You can see that it's, it's ruining our fishing. We could attempt to get cheeky with it. Put a couple of these next to it and see if that solves our problem. The easiest way again to check is looking at our fishing. We're sucking up polluted water over here, so that should be a problem. And it's not showing it just yet. We're cleaning it up. We're cleaning it up. So you could do something like this. Again, this is one of those policies. I just, I don't understand. Oh, I didn't turn it on. <laughs> Okay, every now and then you feel a little silly. So we'll turn these off and we'll see what it does. And I think I might have actually had it on citywide and I clicked on this district because now that we're taking a look, it's still polluting. Uh, this policy is not good. So I'm not going to, I'm not going to, to use this policy. To me, this is not a valuable thing to experiment with. It's uh, it's kind of a weird one. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't know why anyone would want to do this. So we'll keep that there to try to clean the pollution up out of here because you can see that just in that little while, we've we've done a number on the water here. We would eventually pollute this entire lake and ruin it. So, you know, that's something that we could do. <laughs> that's a thing. But I'm not, I'm not super excited about that. So we're gonna, we're gonna not do that. Okay, so I do want to check our happiness. We've done a couple of things where we presumably have changed the happiness. We had the tourism thing. I don't know that the policies have really done much. Happiness, we're still at 85. <laughs> so, you know, take that take that for what you will. Uh, the, the policies that, that claim to be increasing happiness, you know, maybe they are. It, it, it's going to be negligible, so... Uh, with that, though, we have reached our population threshold. We have a city of 90,000 Sims and this new little area of Hamilton, which I do not believe if we've not covered our new areas. We're going to do that. Oh, that was foolish <laughs> because now we've lost all of our new population. So we are going to suffer for our mistakes. So I'll let this run for a minute and we will come right back. Okay, and our population's almost back. While we are waiting, I do want to decorate a bit in the park here. And nothing extravagant, just some nice flowers. Okay, so I've done just a little bit of landscaping, just a, a little bit to, to make it feel a bit more alive. So some trees, just something to, to bring it to life doesn't need to be extravagant and in fact if we wanted to make it more extravagant what we could do is upgrade these roads to some of the tree line roads there we go now this feels like a gathering place a place you could hang out and do something and that's the main point of that and with that we're getting very close to our population milestone so what I'm gonna do is just level this out a bit here and try to get this to blend in just a little bit more. Now that I have this, I can get rid of this power line. No longer needed. And once again, we have hit our population milestone and we've built this little community. I like it. I think it's, it's a nice little community. Home to, let's see, 2,300 people. So a lot of the population growth occurred outside of Hamilton. 
which is kind of interesting. So with that, I think we're gonna leave it here. I hope that you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please hit the like button. If you aren't subscribed, please consider doing so. And I will see you in the next one. Take care. Bye-bye.